Welcome to our sunrise stroll and chat this morning. A lot of cloud all around. It rained a little last night. It's a little unusual to get rain this late in the year. Our next rain should be, serious rain should be in November. A little smile in the cloud. But I think the sun is a little bit higher than that now, so it's coming down through that gap in the cloud. And then it's coming up here. So we have a ways to go a little bit before we see the sun. For our sunrise stroll and chat here in Galilee. Not as high up as I came on Thursday. I prefer to catch this little bit of sunlight for you. A little bit closer to the Magdala site, just above it. In fact, let me see here how I can do this for you. Yes, that was the lake house where the consecrated used to live before they became six. And over here we have Ducunaltum is hidden by these bushes. It's right there behind the post. And then we're at the guest house here. And actually the clouds on this side are, are very nice. Let me do this here so you can see better. And this is Mount Arbel, just a little corner of it. So let's come back now because the light is nice here where the sunlight is coming through the cloud. The Scots should be happy with all the thistles. We will have more to show you later. Good morning, Pennsylvania. You got a friend in Pennsylvania? That used to be the slogan of Pennsylvania. Hope they didn't lose the friendship even if they changed the slogan. So here we are waiting for the sun to come out behind these clouds. I see some rays but the camera is not picking them up too well. A little silver lining maybe on the cloud there. Oops, what happened here? So, good morning everybody, welcome. It's Sunday morning, a blessed Sunday morning. Many places of the world are celebrating the ascension. And a cloud took him from their sight. Imagine the light from that cloud in the story of the Passover, crossing the Red Sea, Mount Sinai, God came present in a cloud and in a very special way on Ascension Thursday, in the Ascension of our Lord.
So here at the Sea of Galilee, let's read these lines from the Acts of the Apostles. We're, because of this seventh week of Easter, we're back at chapter 1 and right after the Ascension. Verses 12 to 14, a short little text. After Jesus had been taken up to heaven, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a, sh a Shabbat day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. And it names all the apostles. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. All these devoted themselves with one accord to prayer. So we are all from all over the world here, devoted now to an, this one accord to be united, reading the word in the midst of this nature and praying. And they were together with some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. So this is the group there that continued together in that space. There were probably a lot more around, but they all couldn't stay in that one house, but they would gather. And we have a beautiful psalm, I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. What is the land of the living? And I remember that line in the Gospel where they bring a difficult case to Jesus to resolve how can, you, how can this woman who had seven husbands, how can the resurrection happen because she'd have to have seven husbands and that would be against the, the, the Torah. And Jesus said, for God, they are all alive. You remember? He is the God of the living. So, with the resurrection of Christ and the ascension, we have our eyes focused on the land of the living, where death will never touch again. The land of the living. And this is where we need to raise up our hearts to the land of the living. If that's too fast, tell me to slow down so you don't get dizzy. Human nature sitting at the right side of God in glory, right side of the Father, in the land of the living. We have a nice wait for us this morning to see the sunrise, but it should be coming, little by little people. And that's the way life is on this earth. Sometimes we have to wait and we live by hope and by faith. I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. We see them now 
and the earth, beautiful realities, but also in the midst of lots of pain and grief. And so Peter's letter, 1 Peter 4, 13-16, says to us, Rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ, so that when his glory is revealed, you may also rejoice exultantly. You see, Peter went through all of this, and especially the misery of his own failings and heart. But now he is, what you would say in the Psalm 27 that we just had, another line, One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And that's not just with all respect the temple in Jerusalem or St. Peter's Basilica to be there or even to be here in the Holy Land. I know many of you would love to be here, come back quickly, whatever. To dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord. If these sunrises are beautiful, if these moments of friendship on earth are beautiful, spousal love, faithful friendship in times of trial. These are beautiful realities. They are just a shadow. All that cloud will be taken away. They are the little bit of light we are seeing behind the cloud now. And the sun will come in full splendor. I believe that I will see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. O you, of you my heart speaks. You my glance seeks. Just like we're waiting for that sun to come out, we're waiting even more to glance the Lord. And so the, the silver lining is not just some little faint type of make-believe hope. The silver lining is ready to become gold and platinum. And much more than any material that we have on this earth. Even the wounds will be glorified in heaven. Rejoice to the extent that you share in the sufferings of Christ. So when his glory is revealed, and Peter went through that, and now in glory, you may also rejoice exultantly. If you are insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you. If you are pushed back, if people smile between their teeth and say, mm, poor person, poor little simple believer, when will they grow up? or others who suffer very great violence directly. <clears throat> Let no one among you be made to suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or an intriguer. But whoever is made to suffer as a Christian should not be ashamed, but glorify God because of the name. That's a marvelously strong text. That's absolutely marvelous. Imagine all that Paul went through, Saul went, uh, Peter went through, Mary Magdalene went through. So many difficulties. So many difficulties. We have a history also of teenagers and children who are martyrs for the faith. The, the beautiful preface of the martyrs in the Mass, you show your strength in the human weakness. His glory shines through the sh human weakness. Okay, there are beautiful rays here, but my camera is not getting them.
Well, I think you can begin to imagine how they are when you see the clouds the way they are. That's a wonderful light coming there. Hello, Yesenia. Greetings. Saludos. So there you can see the light now a little better with that perspective. And it's really getting intense, so I think we're going to expect to see the sun here shortly. That looks like the promise. And now some words from the Gospel. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify, give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you. And God's plan for us is glory, even if it goes through a bit of Calvary. Give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave them. And this is chapter 17 of John in the Last Supper, just before Gethsemane, just before the way of the cross, just before Calvary, just before the tomb, the embalming, placing his body in the tomb, going home, being terribly sad, being broken, confused, not knowing what the next thing is going to be, and scared. And he's telling them at the Last Supper. He's praying out loud. This is called, famously called the priestly prayer of Christ over the last number of centuries. Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Just as you gave him authority over all people, so that your Son may give eternal life to all you gave him. Now this is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God and the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do. What a wonderful line. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work you gave me to do. Now glorify me, Father, with you. Oh, wow, there's the sun, people. Look at that. Now glorify me, Father, with you. Isn't that good timing? Isn't that beautiful? There we go, guys. Here we have the sun. It's peeping out directly at you over the Sea of Galilee here on our sunrise stroll and chat. We had all this cloud and now we have this beautiful sunshine directly into our camera, into your eyes. Now glorify me, Father, with you, with the glory that I had before the world began, before the sun was created, before it reflected on the Sea of Galilee. I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept my word. They have kept your word. Now they know that everything you gave me is from you, because the words you ha gave me I have given to them, and they accepted them, and truly understood that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours, and everything of mine is yours, and everything of yours is mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I will no longer be in the world, but they are in the world, while I am coming to you. Lord, it's Sunday, people, it's Sunday, the day of the Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth, of all creation. Our Redeemer, glorified, ascended to heaven.
Let me give you a little sweep around the lake. Our sunrise stroll and chat here in Galilee. Look at all these thistles. Scots people, hurrah for the Scots. Got all these thistles here. And there's tons of them up here actually as well. A bunch of caves over there. Maybe I'll zero in on them in a moment. Or on another occasion. There's a cow sitting on, uh, standing on that rock right up there in the very center of the screen. I have lifted up the camera so I can't adjust the focus right now, but maybe we'll catch them later. We have a lot of clouds still over here. So I'm going to take you around a little bit because on Thursday when I was coming down I found lots of flowers and I want to see what the good Lord has in store for you right now. So let's stroll guys. It's a bit rough. It's, we're on the, the side of the hill. so. There's a very special one over here. Well, there's two sets of them. Let me get the one down here. And it has a flower a little bit like the mimosa tree, but it's just a small plant. So you flower experts have to tell me what it is. Oops, sorry, my got caught here. Guten Morgen, Claudia. Wow, that was a nice timing for the bee to come in at that very moment. Now, who knows what that plant is? Look at the leaves, look at the, the flowers. I don't know the name of that plant. Let's look at the thistles here with the sunlight on them. Don't worry, I won't put it in your nose. So let me get better footing here. Then there's a small little yellow one here. It really looks like a weed and there's lots of it. I was astonished actually there that after all the heat, the intense heat wave we had this past week, 44, 45 degrees, it dropped about 15 degrees Celsius, uh, which is a lot uh, in one day. So it, um, oh, there we have some more of Queen Anne's lace. You know, now I'm learning something with you guys. And then all this uh, leafy stuff here is, that golden looking stuff is all this darnel, this weed that doesn't produce any grain. It's empty. So here's a little path for the tractors and the barbed wire fence to keep the cows in. Oh, here's a different flower. Look at this nice yellow one. Oops, sorry, the phone is rotating on me. Now this is a very different flower. It has a reddish center. 
there are not too many leaves here so it's if you want clues to identify it and these are all growing wild here look at all these thistles I won't get too close so you won't get prickled by the thorns here we got more of these nice yellow ones aren't they too nice to be called a weed Well, my phone is rotating there. Sorry about that. So today is a special day here in this country. It's Eid al-Fitr, the final celebration after the Ramadan. And we rejoice with our workers, our employees all the guides and drivers and agencies who work serving the pilgrims coming to the Holy Land and we pray for them that God the good Lord will bless them profoundly with great gifts of peace in their hearts the great generosity they developed during these days of Ramadan looking after the poor here we got more of these yellow ones So I'm not sure how many more. I thought I had another one for you, but we already saw some new ones today. We have these little purp uh, bluish purplish ones here. They're like, they have a, like a daisy type of look to them. So there you have some of the wildlife in, now it's getting dark over here. Some of the wildlife here in in Galilee the wildflowers well this was a delightful stroll this morning with you all and I wish you many many blessings here we got lots of these ones got lots of bees here so hope they don't sting me So people, I will say goodbye, God bless you, be good, celebrate today, celebrate with all those who are celebrating the Ascension, and see you later with these little different flowers again, different ones here, look at this. God bless you, see you later alligators. <laughs>